everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I am finally sharing my endometriosis story and I'm so excited to be able to share this with you. And just like the last video that I posted, which if you have not seen already, is an informational video on what endometriosis is. So I will link that here or there or wherever. It'll be up there and it'll also be in the description down below. I was diagnosed with endometriosis on June 16th, 2016, and that is definitely not where my story started. My story started years before that. I was 20 at the time. So going back, my period started when I was 12, and I didn't really have a lot of symptoms of endometriosis early on, but I feel like as a middle schooler, I had pretty heavy periods, but I feel like in middle school you don't really talk with all your friends about how heavy your period is. At the time I wasn't really aware of that. That was kind of my only early onset symptom. So in high school my freshman year I woke up one morning feeling really off and just like really nauseous and having a lot of lower right sided pain. and. Initially, I was like, okay, whatever, went to school, did all my normal, usual things. And then it was the end of the day and I was like, something is not right. And I talked to my parents and we ended up going to the emergency room because we were worried that it might be appendicitis. And we went and we had all the typical scans and blood tests done and it came back as mesenteric adenitis, which at the time didn't really mean much besides that I had a swollen lymph node in my mesentery, which is like part of your abdominal wall. So with that, they just said, you know, monitor it for the next few weeks. If nothing changes, go back to your doctor. So I went to my general doctor a few weeks later because I was still having pain, still feeling really nauseous and just having a lot of digestive issues. She recommended that I go to a GI specialist just because a lot of my symptoms were gastro related. I went and saw a GI doctor. This was probably a couple months after my initial ER visit and I saw this GI doctor. I can't even remember. I think he did like a physical exam like pressing on my abdomen and asking me questions and whatnot and he said to me, well, you have functional abdominal pain. I'm pretty sure that's not a thing. I'm not a medical professional, but that sounds so crazy to me. Yes, I have pain and I'm functioning, but what is the cause of that? He like didn't want to go any further into what was wrong with me. I don't know, I could have had like a food allergy or some severe issue, but he just diagnosed me with functional abdominal pain and out the door I went. I was livid about that. I was so mad because I knew that something wasn't right and it was just happening and reoccurring day in and day out. I ended up going to a different GI specialist. This was probably maybe not quite a year later, but it was from freshman to sophomore year. I saw a different GI specialist and she did no physical exam. We just talked. And she said, you know, you could do a colonoscopy and an endoscopy to see if there's anything that we can see internally. But based on your symptoms, I really don't think we're going to see any of that. So after going from doctor to doctor and being the mystery patient, my now mother-in-law said, why don't you see this holistic nutritionist I've been seeing? She's really good. She'll just do like a home visit and talk to you and discuss what might be going on with you and so we did that this was january 2012 was when we met with this woman she told me that she thought that a lot of my issues that i was having was related to like i had been taking ibuprofen for dance injuries and a concussion and like other random things here and there and she thought that my pain could be because of the ibuprofen and so she said stop taking ibuprofen which i wasn't taking it regularly but I had been taking it occasionally on and off for things. And she cut out all grains, corn, which corn is a grain, soy, white potatoes, refined sugars, and she told me to do limited dairy, which basically is the paleo diet. It's an anti-inflammatory way of eating. So I started doing that in 2012, and I honestly noticed a lot of difference in my digestive symptoms and in the amount of regular pain that I was having. So that was really, really good. That set me on a good track for a while. The years from the time that I started my period to 
my senior year were indicators of the endometriosis. We haven't fully gotten into where my symptoms really started to get bad, so I wanted to explain those things because they really matter, and I'll kind of get into that in a bit, but I'm like quickly moving along because there are a lot of bits and pieces to the story. So anyways, my senior year, this is kind of where everything starts to go downhill. I remember I was at musical rehearsal. I was fairly religious about keeping track of my period. I'm standing at musical rehearsal. I'm just like, not doubled over in pain, but just kind of like, this doesn't feel good. Just like this really full, heavy pain. I don't know why, because I had never had that before, but nothing like clicked on in my brain like, oh, this isn't right. I just kind of brushed it off. And the next day I woke up and I was rolling in my bed in so much pain. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if I was gonna pass out or throw up, but I knew something was gonna happen and I needed to get into the bathroom. I went to the bathroom and everything was normal. After I went to the bathroom, I put the toilet seat down and I texted my mom and I said, can you bring me ibuprofen or bring me medicine and water? I don't know what's going on, but I'm in a lot of pain. And so she brought those things up to me. I was like pale as a ghost, no color in my face at all. My lips were completely white. And, you know, she made sure that I was stable enough and I took the medicine and she left and I remember I just got down on the floor and laid down because I was pretty positive that I was gonna pass out. And so I laid on the floor for a little while and then I felt like I needed to go to the bathroom again. So I got up, I went to the bathroom and I got my period and I was like, oh, perfect, that's all it was. Again, it didn't like click in my brain like, oh, that's, not normal. You should not be feeling like this. This has never happened before. Then a month later, I woke up and same kind of thing. I could feel that the pain was progressing and I was like, okay, I know what's coming, but I was still in a place where I felt like I could get up and take care of myself. I went downstairs and I got some water and some medicine. By the time that I got from our kitchen back to the stairs, halfway up the stairs, I ended up crawling to bed because it was so painful. So that kind of kept happening pretty regularly. My period started getting more and more heavy every single period and the cramping and the pain was getting worse and worse and lasting a longer period of time. My periods were probably starting to last seven to nine days, which is not normal. And it wasn't until probably about a year later, I was in cosmetology school and I was just like put out and I was at school and I just was sitting all day, not doing my work, not getting anything done because I just felt like I couldn't do anything. And so I went to a gynecologist for the first time and I just, went to the one that my mom went to because I, you know, at the time wasn't educated and didn't know much about endometriosis or any gynecological disorders, really. I saw this woman and I was probably still 18 at the time and I hadn't had a pelvic exam ever in my life. It's a little stressful the first time you're gonna have a pelvic exam. And so I like prepped myself for it and I was ready. And then she didn't do one. And I remember telling her, it basically feels like someone's grabbing my uterus by each side, gripping on and ripping it apart every single time I get a period. And she was like, oh, well, you know, a lot of women get pretty bad periods and that's normal. So let's try some birth control and see how that works. And I, you know, naive, was like, okay, sure. So I was on birth control for like the first three months and my periods were bad and I had a lot of spotting. Nothing really changed for me. I went back to her to do a follow-up and she told me, well, if that didn't work, um, let's, let's try something else. There are thousands and thousands of pills out there. There has to be one that works for you. And I, again, naive, was just like, uh, okay. We did pills for a little while longer and that was not helping me. So I decided to go more of an alternative, more natural route, I guess. I went to Kiffer's aunt, who is a doctor. She listened to my symptoms and we talked for a little bit and she said, I think your pelvis is jammed. And when she said my pelvis is jammed, I, in my head was like, excuse me, 
what? <laughs> what did that mean? And basically she said that for my years of dancing or falling or whatever, my pelvic structure was like forced in on itself and that chiropractic work would benefit me and that should help. And so I started going to see her sister who was a chiropractor for, it was about two months and I went two to three times a week. And honestly, I like going to the chiropractor and it felt really good, but that was not helping my immediate issue with my periods. It obviously was probably really good for the structure of my body to be getting adjusted. So I started going back to Kipper's aunt. She does a lot of like muscle response testing, kind of tells you what your body's lacking or what it needs. She does a lot more natural testing. And we did that for a little bit and she prescribed supplements for you or tells you what foods you should be avoiding. She would always get my pelvis and my uterus and my ovaries. I remember her saying like, I don't know what to do for these things, but she was feeling like that there was maybe something more severe like endometriosis or PCOS. And she recommended that I go back to my gynecologist. I made an appointment with my gynecologist and I told them, you know, I was referred by another doctor to be tested for these things. At that time, I had done a little bit of research on endometriosis and I knew that you couldn't just be diagnosed with it, like it's a process. So I explained to them that I knew that when I asked for the appointment and they said, well, let's do an ultrasound and then we'll do a follow-up appointment after that and discuss. I went in for my ultrasound and they just did an external ultrasound. I had my follow-up and she said, everything looks great. Let's do some birth control. And I told her, no, thank you. I'd rather not. And that was it and I left and I was so frustrated and I've gone through all these years of nobody knowing what's going on with me and people just pushing things that are not gonna help. And I think I mentioned this in the last video but a lot of women, on average, it takes about seven years to be diagnosed with endometriosis because there are not a lot of people who are experts in it. There are not a lot of people who want to jump to surgery. It can be misdiagnosed as a lot of other things. So it's really hard to get a diagnosis for it. So I then very frustrated, I messaged the girls at the salon that I used to work with at the time and said, one of you has to have a gynecologist that you like. There are like 13 of us. One of you has to have someone. And I explained to them that I might have endometriosis and I'm trying to find someone who's really, really good. And one of the girls said, I've been seeing this doctor and she's really great. She actually did that surgery on me a couple years ago. So I made an appointment with her. I saw her February 6th, the day after my birthday, 2016. I went in and explained to her what my symptoms were, which my main symptoms were really painful periods, uh, really heavy bleeding, long periods, back pain, really bad fatigue, like really bad fatigue where it would take me hours to get out of bed in the morning. And I think those were all kind of the main symptoms. And she said, well, because you have a history of digestive issues, I wanna do a colonoscopy first just to see if there's anything there because sometimes there can be and if there's not we'll go ahead and do your surgery to see if you have endometriosis i just met this woman and she took me so seriously and was so intentional with me she just sat there face to face with me and talked to me and looked at me in the eye and just let me know that we're gonna get to the bottom of this and we're gonna figure this out i had gone through doctor after doctor after doctor who could not figure it out and some who didn't care to figure it out and now here's this woman who just met me 10 minutes ago and wants to make sure that i am taken care of and that i am seen and that she helps me get to the bottom of my issues because she knows that this is not normal i can't stress enough how important it is to find someone who's going to be an advocate for you and just advocate for your health and your well-being. So yeah, that was February 6, 2016. I had a colonoscopy, I think March 15th, 2016. Post-procedure, I was told that everything looked great. I went back for my follow-up with my gynecologist. It had been about a month since my colonoscopy when I got back in with her. I had started my period just a few days prior and I was not about to cancel that appointment because I had my period. 
I knew that I needed to get in to see her or this was gonna be stretched out so much longer because it takes forever to get in with her. That period on day one woke up in a lot of pain like I normally do, but I was having a lot of lower right side of pain. I was laying on my back and my right leg was out straight and I could not do anything to move my right leg without being in excruciating pain. So I went back two days later and they did an internal ultrasound. So I made a follow-up appointment for that afternoon with a different doctor. So this doctor explained to me that on my left ovary, which I was not having any pain, I had two fluid-filled cysts, both ranging about one to two centimeters. And on my right ovary, I had a hemorrhaging cyst that was about three to four centimeters. What's interesting to me is I found out that a hemorrhaging cyst can be mistaken on a scan for mesenteric adenitis which brings me back to my ER visit in my freshman year of high school. So now this doctor is saying to me, we can put you on a medication that would suppress your estrogen. It's called letrozole. Cysts and endometriosis feed off of estrogen. So she told me these things and I told her that my doctor had wanted to do surgery and she was like, well, she's here. Let me go talk to her. So my doctor comes in and tells me that this is really a big deal what's going on in my body. So after some scheduling conflicts with the office, we are finally able to get a surgery scheduled for June 16th, 2016. My doctor found endometriosis. There was not a lot, but she did find some. I had uterine polyps that were removed. I had adhesions on my lower left intestines that attached my intestines to my hip. And I had the most remarkably spastic colon that she had ever seen in all her 20 some years of doing surgeries on people. And isn't that just the best thing ever? <laughs> so I spent the next two weeks just recovering and letting my body heal from the surgery. And it actually takes about a year for your body to like fully readjust and recuperate from your surgery. So since my surgery, I have done a few rounds of a few different kinds of birth control. I've done pills that have been like a combo pill that are estrogen and progesterone. And those really weren't great for me as I knew pills weren't in the past. I knew when I was getting married that I wanted to be on some form of birth control. So I tried the IUD and I had that for about a year and that was really not good for my body. It was really painful like all the time. Got rid of that. I tried the mini pill that also was not good and right now I have the Nuva Ring and I feel like I'm maybe still in the adjustment phase for that. It hasn't been awful but it hasn't been great and at this point you know I'm gonna be four years out from my initial surgery and I'm still trying to figure out my body. A lot of people have symptoms that are lasting beyond the removal of endometriosis. For me, that is a lot of the digestive issues that I have. I've eliminated more from my diet since I was initially put on the paleo diet. It's been a matter of adjusting and learning what my body is like post-op. My periods are definitely, definitely a lot better. I also did some physical therapy for pelvic floor muscles because you spend so many years in pain, your muscles are reactive to that and become very tense. So I did pelvic floor therapy and that was very beneficial to me. I definitely noticed the difference in the tightness of my back muscles and the tightness of my abdominal muscles. Yeah, it's just kind of going to be this lifelong journey of figuring out what's going on with my reproductive system. I think I've touched on everything. You know, I'm still eating the anti-inflammatory diet that has been so, so, so beneficial for me. Now that I've been through PT, I can do stretches on days that are more painful. Just know that if you're someone who is struggling with endometriosis or thinks you might have it, it really can become a lifelong journey of getting to know your body every single day and knowing what it needs and knowing how to take care of it. A really important part of that is finding really good care, whether it's a general doctor or a gynecologist or a physical therapist. It's really important for your body to be in the right hand. So just like in the last video, I'll link in the description below some very helpful resources that I've used to learn more about endometriosis and get connected 
with other women out there who have it. Feel free again to reach out if you have any questions about my story, if you have any questions about your personal story. I would love to be able to chat and help you along if that is something that you need. And if you have endometriosis and you are open to sharing your story, I would love if you would leave a little blurb about your story in the comments below. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Thank you so much for supporting me and spreading awareness for endometriosis. Thank you for becoming educated through my last video and hearing about my personal story. It really means a lot to me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and feel free to hit the bell icon if you would like to be notified anytime I upload a new video. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I am more than happy to chat. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.